Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this very special episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with most of the writers for a very special book coming out on Kickstarter by Onyx Path um, uh, very shortly uh, called Scarred Lands, Dead Man's Rust. And um, I'd say I am excited about it, especially because I saw the cover art and I fell in love with it. Uh, it, it a great job. Um, I'm a huge fan of Greek mythology. Um, and we're living in very interesting times where there seems to be a, a, a sudden interest in that mythology. I mean, we, we see Daros come out, we've seen uh, Odyssey of the Dragon Lords and uh, other independent books, uh, Arcadia. And then there's Scarred Lands coming out with another source book on the Kickstarter soon. Um, so I'll give a chance for each of you to introduce yourselves and just tell me why what's your what's what is it about this book that you're most excited to that you've written that you're excited to share with uh with either fans of scarred lands or just fans of of, of role playing in general so scarred lands uh is a massive sprawling uh campaign uh book like it's i don't even know that calling it a campaign book is uh mm -hmm. sufficient just because it goes all over the place and does a lot of things uh and i kind of like all of the stuff that I worked on, <laughs> uh, like I, um, in sort of the uh, mythos of Scarred Lands, the the uh, uh, concept of it is that like there there was uh, a war between the gods and the titans, so similar to the uh, Greek Titanomachy uh, that uh, you alluded to, and uh, one one of the gods, uh, Mormo, or sorry, one of the titans, Mormo, got torn to pieces and each of those pieces like bled ichor and gore into the ground and then that corrupted uh the uh the uh creatures and plants everything it, it corrupted the ground itself and a, a lot of that uh takes place in the uh, hornsaw forest the uh forest of blood because everything is of blood in scarred lands i'm not even kidding there's like five or six places there's blood everywhere and a lot of the stuff that i wrote uh, has to do with uh the hornsaw forest which is a great place you could have an entire uh campaign there uh and you could also get killed by a unicorn with a chainsaw for a horn so you know what's what's not to love yeah, I think that's the reason I signed on was I was like, Hornsaw <laughs> Forest, I'm in. Uh, let me catch up on Scarred Lands real fast. Um, I also got to do a lot of work with uh, Jess Karras, so that was fantastic. Um, we had a lot of fun working together on the, uh, or sorry, I had a lot of fun working together. I only speak for myself, um, working on the uh, the broad reach of uh, Dwarf Village. Um, but some of the stuff I got to do on my own was like I got to create a fantastically creepy cult that's also like sort of performance artist so like so annoying on so many levels and that was basically <laughs> my job was like if I can make Travis our editor laugh or cringe then I knew I was doing the right thing so that's sort of uh, where a lot of my fun came from but also it was just having like being able to put like a lot of adventure hooks in versus writing a full adventure was an interesting process um as well and like you know a lot of the collaboration we did via slack ugh, slack um was a uh, it was a uh, it was integral to the the uh, the book and I'm, I'm super excited for people to play it and like see how some people pick up on some adventure hooks and then leave others in the dust but um yeah between creepy cult and then i think oh i made a um a magic rouge so that you can trick the undead like I'm ready to go. Jess, I'm going to pass. I'm going to popcorn to you because I want to hear what you weren't and were not excited about. Sorry, <laughs> I, just said, I just said weren't twice. Sorry. <laughs> what, are you, what are you excited about? I, I will say I also had fun working with you, uh, which I'm not just saying because I'm looking at you right now. I would also say that if you weren't right here, um, <laughs> uh, I think I had the most fun working on um, Leone at the beginning of the book. You can start out in Leone at the Night of Chronicles. I also did a lot of work on Leone in a different Scarlands title, Vigil Watch. And so there's just now Leone is just, it owns my whole heart. So you're pretty much Mother Manticora. That's what we're going to start calling you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm the High Pride Mother. <laughs> Um, I accept the title Mother Mansakora. Thank you. I'm going to get new business cards ordered uh, today, I think. 
And I think that's all I have to say about that now that I have this exciting new title to put on my business cards. <laughs> I, I cannot possibly like overstate the importance of Jessica's work on the on the state of the Manticora in fifth edition and, and on uh, how their culture and how the city of Leone came together. So it's really, oh, it's really you. your baby. So, that, and, and it's amazing stuff. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, I, that's my favorite part of everything, I think, is everything to do with the Manticora and Leone. Um, if we're popcorning, I can popcorn it over to Fran. Oh, I'll take that. Um, just checking to make sure I'm not muted. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I. Well, one, I do have to say, I, I love what we've, what's been done with the Manticore for 5e. Um, it uh, connects in well with the Manticore characters that we have in our novel um, and supports uh, sort of what they're like. And we're building on uh, all of that stuff with uh, community content that we're, that we're putting out there. Like Frostlands of Fenrir like, has a character who's a Manticora from the library who's gone to Fenrir like, to bring back some animals and then gets there to find out that the animals are really big and mostly need to be really cold and is going, oh, crap, oh, I'm going to need bigger boxes. As far as uh, my favorite parts, Rust, it's going to be really tough because we, uh, it, it was such a neat collaboration with so many different people. Um, I think my, one of my favorite things about Rust is the fact that the setting is inclusive from the ground up. I mean, right from the, right from the baseboards and um, like I, I started talking to Travis around day one about the fact that um, I thought that uh, the Hollow Legionnaires had an opportunity to be good representatives of um, folks with variation of gender because Hollow Legionnaires are basically these souls that are so angry about the fact and so frustrated about the fact that they couldn't do enough when they were alive that they don't go to an afterlife or reincarnate themselves. They just kind of fizz around in the atmosphere. And finally, um, uh, the, uh, the forge god Corian sets up a process uh, for various reasons that you can read about in the book to say, hey, would you like to come back and maybe do some more stuff? to guide these souls back down into bodies. And when they come back, their gender is often a thing that they just kind of don't remember that much about. They don't think that much about it. it it's, it's not the thing that drives them. And so it's not one of the things that kind of makes it through that process. So more than other races, there are a lot of folks uh, who are hollow legionnaires who are like, I know I had a gender. <sighs> I, I try to remember what it was, but anyway, uh, look, I got to talk to you about this, this, uh, you know, bunch of refugees that we're trying to help. So like, I, I loved the fact that we, you know, I threw this out and people just kept yes ending and picking up and, and running with stuff like that. I think that's probably my favorite thing about it is, and that's just one example of the ways in which we went out and said, let, you know, what, what sacred cows can we tip over? What, um, what stereotypes can we throw on their heads? I just and, want to briefly uh, tag in with that. Mm. That like, there, I know I ended up making uh, like deliberately uh, trans adventure hooks and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. And like it, like mm -hmm. it's, it's baked in like yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> i think my initial draw to scarred lands just as a setting is the in a lot of the fantasy settings the, the war between uh the gods and the titans or some similar event would be this like distant past thing or in scarred lands it's 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 fresh it's right there and and it's sort of got this um apocalyptic vibe but with a, a core of heart to it and that 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 hits my sweet spot twisted scary things with some heart um uh, for Rust itself, I got to write a lot of uh, some of the the day to day stuff in the city of Glivetal, which is the city of uh, necromancers, and they're not just I mean they are nefarious necromancers, but rather than that just being something they're using to meet an end, that's like their, it's just part of their culture. It's uh, is is being these freaky necromancers. So getting getting to write some of the twisted stuff that goes in there was a lot of fun for me. Um, on another project, one of my favorite things was was bringing polyamory to the Iron Court. And as far as Scarred Lands, what do I love about Scarred Lands itself? 
it's like taking an issue of heavy metal magazine and slamming it into a player's handbook and having a game pop out the other side. Um, that's what I love about the setting. Um, Rust specifically, every single last word of it. But if I had to uh, put, I think I think it's amazing. Um, I'm I can say this from a relatively humble place because. I didn't do a, I, I did do some writing, but the lion's share of the writing was done by these fine folks and other fine folks who uh, wouldn't fit on the screen. We tried, but um, we ran out of uh, grease, um, so we just couldn't get everybody in the, in the same. We we bottlenecked, um, <laughs> but uh, we I we got to work with this incredibly de- group, diverse group of voices who are all extremely skilled, know what they're doing, have a good grasp on the material, and had a ton of ideas. I don't mind saying that I think that this is going to prove to be the uh, greatest adventure uh, conceived to date for the fifth edition of the world's most popular role-playing game. Um, you hear that world? Do you hear that? No, sorry. Oh, damn. <laughs> That's like a hype statement. <laughs> it's true. Um, and it's because of y'all. I, I, I pointed in a couple directions and wrote a few words down, but uh, it was really, we had an amazing crew. Um, so I, I guess the thing that I'm probably excited the most to see how it pans out at people's tables is Glivet Autel because I really wanted to make the most hideous um, collection of monstrous villains that in and of themselves aren't necessarily monsters. Um, you know, most of the necromancers of Glivet Autel are human or at least humanoid. Um, they're just horrific, terrible people who do awful awful things in the service of just getting more power there's no there's no noble cause behind it there's no like you know we 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 will serve an ultimate greater good there's we're just power hungry and the world will be a better place when we're in charge of it and if you don't agree we'll just rip your soul out and stick it into a zombie um so that it's a better gardener for example of some of the things that they do uh also i'm I, I want to hang a little bit of a lantern on the fact that we have imperiled uh, severely an entire species in this book. Um, the Hollow Legionnaires are by far my favorite playable race in Scarred Lands, hands down, above and beyond. Um, so naturally, if we were going to do a big campaign book, the first thing I want to do is make sure that there's a good chance they won't survive if the players screw up. Um, you have to imperil your darlings. I believe uh, when Darth Ennis took over writing Hellblazer, somebody asked him, you know, how'd you come up with the idea to do Dangerous Habits as your first book? And he said, I loved Constantine. So as soon as I got the job, I knew I had to kill him. Um, so <laughs> yep. That was kind of my motivation for that. So that's my short, that's the, that, that might be the shortest answer I've ever given to a question like that, but there you go. Sorry, I rambled. <laughs> well, if I may ask, um, the, the subtitle, Dead Man's Rust, um, what does that mean exactly? Is it, is it, uh, what is it inferring to exactly? I'll take this a little bit and then pass it along. Um, so it's a reference to uh, this magical disease that crops up early in the campaign uh, that starts to be referred to as Legionnaire's Rust. Uh, the Hall of Legionnaires, due to their uh, spiritual, um, you know, sem- semi, semi-undead, semi-construct nature aren't terribly uh, prone to getting sick. And uh, this plague shows up that not only can they catch and, and uh, suffer greatly from, but they can't seem to cure no matter what uh, magic they toss at it. Uh, and that is a central motivating factor for the uh, campaign at large. And I think, uh, I think Fran can probably talk a little bit more about how that affects the Hollow Legionnaires specifically. To go in a little bit more on the Hollow Legionnaires, basically um, during the big dust up that kind of broke most of Scarn and led to, you know, lots of places being renamed with the word blood at the beginning of their name, um, uh, one of the gods created this army of uh, knights people drawn basically souls he soul willing souls that he bonded into armor to fight on his side and he was supposed to put them back to uh basically give them give them lives and then put them back to rest afterwards uh but that didn't quite work out um so these semi-immortal 
paladin type beings are kind of wandering around like, well, what do we do now? And through various misadventures, they wind up in this uh, valley where they sort of get to be in charge. Um, and over time, they go from being these sort of aloof, you know, I was bred for war kind of creatures to, well, there's not war anymore. What do I do now kind of creatures? And they have to get back into being alive. And the Hollow Legion is a big part of that. The Hollow Legion is how they have children, finally, after centuries of just kind of being these automata. And the Hollow Legionnaires are... Um, uh, really bright, brilliant, excited beings, you know, I'm back, I can do things again. Um, but they are also, they and their parents are, are very weird beings in that their parents don't necessarily remember all of the things about being alive, like, oh, that's right, you need bathrooms. So for example, when they build their city, they forget that you need more than a closet to sleep in if you're not a, a living suit of armor. Um, and one of the things that they get really, um, um, not smug about, but that they've just literally forgotten is a thing is disease. They don't remember how it works. It's never affected them for hundreds and hundreds of years. They've been focused on other stuff. And so when this, thing starts sweeping through their ranks, it's, it's really baffling for them. Um, they, they, and what's really weird was we started all of this before COVID was uh, a thing. And then all of a sudden it sort of kept sweeping in and we're like, well, just, you know, double down on it, I guess. Um, Cause the, 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 the hollow Knights have a really hard time figuring out that no, this could actually kill you and you should take it seriously. And you have to isolate, you have to take this into account. Well, we're heroes. We don't, yeah, you're heroes. You're going to die heroes. Don't, don't do that. So that a lot of the struggle is around um, one first, just getting the idea through their heads that this could affect us. And then two, figuring out, what does that mean? How do we how do we deal with that? And part of the player's uh, mission in all of this is to sort of help get that message across of like you have to wear a mask. <laughs> any any last words? Anything that I haven't asked that that you want to share about uh, about about uh, Dead Man's Rust? I can take it first and just say um, you know uh, a it'll be on Kickstarter Monday the twenty third for thirty days. Uh, when you back the Kickstarter, uh, I think at $5 is the, is the buy-in to get access to the previews. We will be releasing the entirety of the campaign's text as it sits right now as part of the preview. And this is a massive sandbox. So I am pretty sure, unless you're doing nothing but playing this campaign, if you picked it up on the first day of the Kickstarter, made your characters, and kept running it like on a weekly basis you will have your deluxe you know very sweet traditionally printed copy that the kickstarter will provide uh in your hands far before you hit the end of the campaign um <laughs> you know there's Sounds there's a close. lot going on in there uh and uh, uh, aside from just being a campaign um it is a sandbox there's not only is it set in the horn south forest but you get all sorts of information so you could run a campaign that was based on living in the Horn South Forest that never touches the actual arc, the actual A plot of this campaign. You don't need to use it. it's it's a it's a world building resource in addition to a campaign. Okay. Besides the besides the Kickstarter page, is there any other place online that if anyone wants to have anyone wants to know more information about this, they can go and see? Uh, you can always get updates about uh, our products at uh, theaddictspath.com. Um, if you uh, go to uh, twitch.tv forward slash the Annex Path, uh, we got actual plays and other talk shows and whatnot coming out the wazoo, especially about Scarred Lands, especially this month. Um, and uh, the, the YouTube channel, the uh, Onyx Path YouTube channel, uh, will have plenty of updates and information accessible there. Okay, excellent, excellent. Well, thank you all for uh, coming by and, and discussing about this book. I'm really excited about it again. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, pleasure. 
<laughs> and to our viewers out there, uh, thank you for watching. Again, everything's in the description below. And um, be safe out there. Have a good day. Thank you.